Hello and welcome to Jo Beth Sexton's Crafty Cauldron. Um, today, as you can tell by the title of the video, I'm going to be working with vellum. The vellum that I'm going to be working with is this vellum here. It's got one shiny side and one matte side. You can see this is the matte side. This is the shiny side. Uh, I believe it is a printable vellum, but I'm not going to be printing on it today. I'm just going to show you um, a couple of little things that, that I have done with vellum. And um, we'll see where it goes. So the first thing, I'm going to put this little book over here. First thing that I wanted to show you is um, I have made pockets with doilies and vellum. And the reason why I like to do this is because... If you're going to make a pocket with a doily, it's got all of these, I don't know if you can see, it's got all of these uneven bits on the back, you know, from being pressed together and all of that. I got these in a package at the dollar store, and there were quite a few of them. I considered buying them from a place like Walmart or something. I'm glad I didn't because it was just really cheap at the dollar store. So um, anyway, what I did was I... Let me, Get a little um, journal and I'll show you. What I did was I, I folded it like this, first of all. And what you want to do is to make sure that your doily front is lower than the doily back. Okay? Because we're going to be putting it, sewing it into the binding. So this can either be this way or you can fold it the other way, depending on where you put it or how you want it in your journal. So basically all I'm going to do is just like show you, this is, this is how I put it in, in the journal that I made. I just did something like this. So it makes a pocket. You can also not stitch it in and clip it to the edge of your paper. Like, oh, looky there. Like so. And, you know, you get a clip. That's my round paper clips. I need to bend it a little bit to make it fit better. But, yeah, it's handmade. What do you want? <laughs> so, like this. Or um, you can cut it in half and you can glue it on. Or you can glue it on the outside. So, when you close your book and you're carrying it, you know, stuff is not going to fall out. It'll, it'll be tucked into the outer side of your page. Okay, so... What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I did this. It's really very simple, and I'm sure you've probably already got it figured out. Anyway, okay, so we've got a doily, and we folded it in half. We'll make sure that's, that's folded really well. It's where you want it and everything. Um, then before you make the crease in the middle, you want to cut your vellum. And I'm just going to cut this part off here because I don't need this big part to work with and it's kind of cumbersome. It doesn't need to be even because we're going to fix that later. Or not. I mean, it is a junk journal. And I like making, I like making junk journals because it's quite relaxed. It's not as, you know, you know hard fast rules except for just a couple things you know certain things work together certain things don't that's beside the point okay so um, we've got our vellum and what we want to do is you want to trace around here and you can use a pen you can use a pencil it can be you know done with a harsh line or not but pencil writes really well on this surface and I will show you just in just a second I'm barely pressing and this is one of those polymer pencils it's a zebra polymer lead so you know it's not like you know, dark really super dark but you can see you see that yeah I just traced around my doily the part that I'm going to use for the vellum and then you want to cut to the inside of the line because this way you don't have to erase 
you can just cut to the inside and that is the, the portion you'll be putting inside your doily. And if you want to go back and erase it later, you can go back and erase it later and, you know, especially for purposes of this video, it's just so much more time-wise for me not to erase it. But this is how I did the other one too. So now we've got the shape of our doily. Let me get rid of that. Well, not get rid of it, but move it out of the way. There we go. So you're going to tuck that down inside of there and kind of even it all up. And if it's not even, you can always trim the edge or not, depending on what you want to do. There you go. Now I use, I'm going to use art glitter glue because it sticks rather well, dries clear, and it's not really bulky. So I'm going to glue on the doily. I'm not going to glue on the vellum because this way we will have the glue hidden behind the doily. So all these little roses on here. Just put in these little leaves. Maybe a couple of these little um, line portion thingies here. Designs. And put some in here. Like this. And I did have, this was a viewer request. Somebody wanted to know what they could do with, with vellum because someone gave them a whole bunch. Now I found this vellum, it, it's in like 18 by 24 sheets and I found it at the thrift store more than 20 years ago. So it's it's vintage. It, it's, it was, I gave it to my son for Christmas because he was interested in being an architect and he still is, but or was as far as I know. Now, as you can see, the glue is showing through. This is a very thin piece of paper, but it's coffee stained. So it really doesn't matter. Okay, so ideally, you'd want to wait until it's dry. You can turn it over and, you know, make sure everything's smooshing out okay. That's your technical term for crafters, smoosh. Okay, just like that. Don't glue this, don't glue this together because you 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 want a pocket, right? So I'm gonna fold mine this way. Fold it just like that. Make sure my folds are nicely creased. Very careful here because you can really tear up your doily if you're if you're just going to slide it along like you do with a regular piece of paper or cardstock, you can tore, tear up your doily really easy. So be careful here. If your creases aren't sharp enough for you, you go back over it, you know? Go back over it and just really carefully kind of bounce up and down on it to get it folded in. So now what you're going to do if you at this point if you want to fold it if if you want to fold it you can go ahead and use it right the way it is right here and you can sew it into your signature if you want to glue it in i recommend cutting on this fold cutting it before you fold it may be easier for some people i'm just going to go ahead and put this right here so then now and you can put it in the bottom, you can put it in the middle, it doesn't matter. It is it, entirely up to you. So then when you're going through your, oh, look at that. And then when you put something into this pocket, because you've got mostly the um, smooth portion here, on the back of your pocket, it's going to slide in really well. Now if you really wanted to make sure that that it was going to be smooth. You could also put another piece of vellum in there and glue it in. Not a problem. So now you have a little vellum foldy pocket with a doily. And I think they look so cool. You can, you can ink it up some more if you want to ink it up some more. I recommend if you're going to ink it, please just tap. Do not rub too much on the doily because you could rip it really easily. But of course, you know, there you go. Give it a little bit more color, and there you are. 
there's your doily that you can sew into your signature. Or the doily that you can glue onto the corner of a page, just like it would go like this. And then you'd slide, you can make it here, and then if you want to put another piece of vellum here, you can have a double pocket. So of course this wouldn't show. This would be this would be on another page. Or you could do it like this, you know, just stitch it on. Stitch it here. Because vellum is really easy to sew, which brings me to my next little project. So I'm just going to leave that in there because I might actually use that in that little journal that I just made. <laughs> okay, another thing that I have done with vellum. I'm going to need my vellum page back. There we go. I have this really, really old book and it is falling apart. It's a, a Browning poetry book and it's really old. This is 1889 right here. So... It's really, really old. The, the pages are very, very delicate. The binding is falling apart. You can see right here, it's falling apart. There's, there's nothing I can do with this book except for maybe uh, take these pages out and use them as they are. Uh, they're so brittle. And I did use a page out of here in a journal that I made for my, my daughter-in-law. She's not technically my daughter-in-law she is because she's part of the family but they're my son and her are not married they they should be it's not they should get married but they should be considered married because they've been together forever okay enough about that so okay so let's just find a page that i would actually use and again this is elizabeth barrett browning um really really great works let's see I know there's shorter ones in here. I might just take a page out. The, what I did was I had a, I found a poem. And sometimes these poems are really long. A lot of hers are really long. And my problem, my, my quandary was, I want to put that whole poem in this booklet, in this journal that I was making for my daughter-in-law. And I, I didn't want to glue the page down because then half of the poem would be gone right i mean it would be forever there's no way to there would be no way to save it right so um i mean it's not like you can peel it up and you know read it or anything i could have i suppose glued it to a piece of tracing paper but that just would have been I don't know. I didn't think of that. I just wanted something different and special. So, okay, this is this is pretty cool. Romance of the Swan's Nest. Look at this. We even have binding thread coming out here. A little binding thread. Look at that. It's just it just fell right off. Huh. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carefully cut this out. And you're all like, no, no, you'll cut other pages. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Mm. I'm barely pushing. Just enough to like score it. And that's about all. See that? There we go. Let's put this aside so nothing happens to it. Now what I did in the journal was... I measured up how big I wanted it to be. You know what? I need my I need my cutter, my trimmer. And this stuff trims really easily. So, I mean, it's it's really a pleasure to work with because it's it's, it's simple. I mean, it's just easy to work with. And then try and find yourself a straight edge and I don't know if I have one left on this page, but we will we will go ahead and work with what we have. And there we go. And we're assuming that that is going to be a straight edge. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so then we've got this part. And it goes over too far, but that's okay because I don't... I don't mind 
having to trim that with my scissors. It's, it's not that difficult once you have an established line. Okay, just trimming that edge. Then we have two straight edges, presumably. And you want to leave you want to leave a border around your page. I'm going to leave a border around your page. And you can do this one of two ways as well. You can you can fold it and do it like that. I'm going to cut it because I don't like folding vellum. Because if you fold it wrong, it scars it. And um, let's see, how long is this? I think it's, it's an off size. Yeah, it's like... 13 and a half inches. So this we need to have one, two, three, four, five, six, six inches. Six and a little more. Actually, let's see if we can go five and a half. Five and a half. Yeah, that'll work. Five and a half. And I'm going to leave the rest as is. So, so trim it at five and a half. Oh, let's do this side. Five and a half. I'm going to need that anymore. So now what we're going to do is, oh, wrong way, there we go. You, you want to decide which part you want outside. I'm going to put the shiny side in, so I want it facing out while I'm working. Okay, and I want to put this, the romance of the swan's nest. So when you look at the page, it's going to be the first thing you see. So I want it over here. And I want this here. Now, this is a little bit tricky because I don't want to use glue. I don't want the glue to mar the appearance. You just want to sew around, you're going to sew around this. So I'm going to use a zigzag stitch and I'm going to use my tiny little sewing machine that is right here and I'm going to do this right now. It may take me a couple of minutes. So don't move. And I don't care uh, personally. I don't, uh, it doesn't matter to me what color the thread is. Um, I am of the philosophy that if you are working on a junk journal, it's going to be any thread that you have in your machine is going to be fine. So, we'll do that. Oops, wrong stitch. Now we're going to have a random stitch. Change that stitch. Let's see, a straight stitch. You want to leave your needle down, turn your work, and keep going because that's what we do. Now I'm going to do a zigzag again. Needle down, turn the page, and I'm going to do another straight stitch. Needle up because I'm switching. Otherwise, it won't work. 
Ben kendi durumu şimdi. And let's go back to zigzag. And let's go back to this half moon, which I absolutely love. It's really cool. No, it's a crescent moon. But it takes longer to sew. dudes okay still zigzag now we're going to change it to a straight and I didn't quite get it even but that is okay as well I'll just leave that corner undone and back switch out of there you okay see that didn't take very long did it so now what we got is we've got this wonderful vintage antique I, I actually 1889 antique book page and it is encased in this vellum however it is not encased entirely because I left, left this off and the reason why I left that off is because I didn't have it laying super flat it's really hard when you're on the machine to do that so it's going to be, it, there's a little lump in it. Let me show you. Let's see. There's a little separation of the vellum right there. You can see. See that? Yeah. Okay, so that's what happened there. So anyway, what we do now is, this is the part that's going to go get sewed into your signature. Now, you may want to reinforce this with washi tape or... Um, Carol Tinson has, she uses uh, micropore tape, which is surgical tape. It's uh, clear cloth tape. Comes in a package like this. I have one that's open, I just can't find it. And um, they're relatively inexpensive, but they are mostly transparent. Once you have it all um, rubbed down and, and it's sticky enough to last on the inside it says 3m and it says micropore um, the outside just says on this one it just says gentle paper tape so you can use apparently you can get gentle hold medium hold and strong hold and this one says see what micropore right there micropore surgical tape is it Focusing, there we go. You can see it now. Excellent stuff. It will replace washi. In fact, you can get narrow and wide. And if you don't have narrow, I don't have narrow. I just cut mine in half. It also takes um, the inker. It takes the the distress ink really, really well. It looks great. Okay. So what I would do then is I would. This is when I would fold it. And the reason why I would fold it is because, of course, you know, you're going to have to stitch it into the binding. But I don't want to fold this yet because I don't know how wide the pages are that I'm going to be using this for. And I'm not just going to sew this and not use it. So there's another thing that you can do with vellum. And that's pretty much all I've got for you for right now. Um, remember, B is for vellum. Ha ha ha. So anyway, if you can find yourself some vellum, um, that's a really great way to use it. Like I said, you can also use tissue paper. Tissue paper is not as durable as the vellum is. The vellum is is quite a bit um, is quite a bit sturdier, and it's it's um, it's still just as just as transparent. You can see, you can read. I like this side better because it's got the Swan's Nest story on it. There you go. Romance of the Swan's Nest by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, 1889 or so. And there you have it. So thank you for watching. Um, if you like this type of video and you 
wish to support my channel, I would greatly appreciate likes and subscriptions to my channel. Um, if you want to share this video, please do so. Um, I have a, an Etsy store and a website, a Facebook page for this video channel and uh, for this YouTube channel. And I have um, there in my YouTube channel blog uh, banner, there are all kinds of links to my Instagram, my blog, and I don't write in my blog very much because I'm super busy with making journals. But um, there's good content there. There's some poetry and then there's some crafting and religious and spiritual and yeah, no, ew, but hey, you got to write what you feel, right? So I hope that you guys try this. If you do and you post to Instagram, please tag me. I'm at S underscore Jobeth underscore Sexton at Instagram. And I would love to see what you do with it. So thank you very, very much. Thanks for watching. And I hope that you all have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Peace, love, and remember... It's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Make it a happy, colorful, crafty one. And don't forget to hug the people that you love because you'll never know when you won't get another chance. So I'll see you soon in another video. Bye!